Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 is where you find your places, but please stand. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And we're going to go ahead and begin in verse number 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Father, bless the message and use it to your honor and to your glory in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Um, we started last Sunday morning. It's, it is a Christmas message, but it is also a New Year's message. I think it is very fitting for this last Sunday of the year and entering into a new year tomorrow. And the title of the message is, With Christmas Comes, Fear Not. Now we saw just now that the angel came, and the angel Gabriel came, and said to Mary, Fear Not. We also saw that the same thing happened to Joseph when Gabriel went to Joseph. The angel also said, Fear Not. Not. He also went to Zacharias, who was the father of John the Baptist, and also said to him, fear not. And then, of course, the one we're probably mo most familiar with is when the, when the shepherds, the Levitical shepherds, were out there in the field, and, uh, and the angel came and, of course, announced the coming of the Lord. But before he announced that, he said to them, fear not. Not. And so with that comes the message. With Christmas comes fear not. There are a lot of fears in people's hearts these days. Uh, this is a silly illustration, but that's pretty much par for me. And um, the uh, Charlie Brown Christmas. I, I watched, hey, I watched that when I was five years old. And I have watched, and I mean this, I've watched it every year since. <laughs> I've watched it every year since. I feel like you, you cannot have Christmas without watching Charlie Brown Christmas. And, and what's so wonderful about it, it's only about 25 minutes long. Amen? And, and wonderful thing was back in that day, that was radical what uh, Charles Schultz did. He put the Word of God in there. A lot of people tried to tell him, no, don't do that, don't do that. But he said, he said no, I'm going to do it. And he put the Christmas story in uh, Charlie Brown's Christmas. Amen. So it's biblical to watch Charlie Brown's Christmas. But, but, but here's what I wanted to point out. Of course, Charlie Brown is always depressed, always discouraged, walks on with a cloud over his head all the time. You, you know the type. And... Um, and so, but in it, he, in the beginning of it, uh, Charlie Brown is, is depressed. And, and Lucy has that little booth of hers. How many know what I'm talking about? That little booth of hers. And at the top of it is psychiatrist. And then the sign that says in or out. And uh, so she, uh, Charlie Brown goes over to the booth. And he sits down. And she sees it. And she runs over, puts in, and brushes off all the snow. And talks to Charlie Brown and says, Charlie Brown, she says, what's the matter? He said, I don't know. I, I'm, just, I'm just so depressed. And uh, it's Christmas. I'm just so depressed. And she said, well, we need to narrow this down. We need to get it down. Uh, what, 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 is, what do you fear? What are the fears that you have right now? And then she, and she said, well, I don't know. She said, do you have fear of cats? And she named that. And he said, no, that, that's not it. And then do you have a fear of this? And do you have a fear of that? She went about three, four things. And he said, no, no, that's not it. And then, and, and then, uh, Oh, man, I, I should have wrote it down. Uh, 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 oh, oh, uh, panto. Do you have pantophobia? Do, do you have, maybe you have pantophobia. Do you have pantophobia? And he says, what's pantophobia? Fear of everything. And, of course, Charlie Brown yells, that's it! <laughs> and Lucy goes tumbling over in the snow, you know. And, 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 you know, I hope that's not you. I hope you don't have fear of everything, especially if you're a Christian. But I, I do believe that everybody here has fear of something. 
I have fear of something. And you say, well, pastor, you, should, you shouldn't have fear. I know that. But sometimes I, I struggle with a fear. Amen? Amen? And, and yet, that's what we find in this beautiful, beautiful story is what God says, what the angel of God said is, is fear not. Now, I could take you all over the scriptures and show you where it says that, but, but that's the focus. And as we enter into a new year, we, we've got to enter in this new year knowing how to overcome our fear. Because you will have fear. And there are, things are going to happen in 2024. Unexpected things. Very difficult things. Tremendous challenges and storms. And oh my goodness. Because it happens every year. But Mary learned or she was able to overcome her fear. And there are three things that I believe that the reasons why Mary was able to overcome fear, and we, we, we focused on one, and that is that she, uh, she learned to develop uh, an awareness of the presence of God. And, and it was told her that the Lord is with thee. And then we talked about Joseph. The angel said, fear not. But he also made it aware to Joseph that the name of the baby the Messiah that was going to come, that Mary was going to bring forth. There were many names he could have given to her, or rather to him, that would be a wonderful name to know about him. But what was the name that uh, the angel gave to him? Emmanuel. And what does that name mean? God with us. Because he needed to know that. Because they were going to face tremendous challenges, just like you and I are going to face tremendous challenges. And one of the things you've got to do, you've got to be able to do, we all believe in the presence of God, but are you aware of his presence? Jesus said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And I've heard, I've heard preachers, I've studied it out, but that is like double, triple, quadruple, negative. You know, I will never, ever, ever, never, never, ever, ever leave thee. And so we have the wonderful assurance this morning that God comes into our life when we get saved and he will never, ever leave us. And so Mary learned that. And, and we also understand that if you are going to have God's presence in your life, that you, God has got to be in you and God can only be in you if you are saved. You know, there's a, this, you know the, the, the fatherhood of God that God, and you, you hear it all the time. We don't even realize sometimes we hear it. Sh things that we watch sometimes, and they'll say, well, God is in everybody, and, and God, is, God is the father of everybody. No, he is not. We are all a creation of God, but we are not all a child of God. And the only way that you become a child of God is when the Holy Spirit of God comes into your life to take up a boat. And by the way, once he comes in you, he will stay in you. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. It so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. And if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So God must be in you, and that happens when you, by grace through faith, get saved. Amen? Amen. You accept Jesus Christ into your life as a sinner bound for hell, and you trust him as your only way to heaven, and you trust what he did on that cross and the fact that not only did he die and was buried, but he rose again on the third day, which means he is alive and well and seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us Amen. right now. Not only is up there, but he's in us as well in the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. So God must be with us and in us, but also we must be with him, which means we must be close to God. We need to have a right relationship with him. Hey, husband and wife can be in the same room together but not be close. And you can have God in your life but not even under, realize that God is in you and with you. In the presence of God and the awareness of God, Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. And so we understand that there needs to be that awareness. Now, here's the message this morning is, how can you develop an awareness of God's presence? There are three things. There could be more things. 
But let me give you just three things I believe will help us. Number one, seek to have them in your thoughts. Seek to have them in your thoughts. Turn over, please, to the book of Psalms, chapter 10, and verse number 4. And that while you're doing that, also find Psalms 94 and verse number 16. Amen? Look at Psalms chapter 10 and verse number 4. And notice what the Bible says here. The psalmist writes, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, notice now, will not seek after God. But then look at the next statement. God is not in all his thoughts. See, when you are, set, when you are not saved, you are not going to have thoughts of God in your life unless the Holy Spirit's beginning to convict you of your need for Jesus Christ. But you're not going to think about God. You're not going to think about, well, God's with me today, and boy, I need God's help today. Uh, if you're unsaved, you, that, that is the furthest thing from your mind. No thought will ever come into your mind throughout the day, well, God's with me. Boy, i got to do this. God, please help me. You're not going to have that. But when you are saved, you can have thoughts of God in your life. And not only that, you should have thoughts of God in your life. You should have those thoughts. Look at Psalm 94. This psalm by David, written, talks about the Lord is his defense and the Lord is his help. And you look at verse number 16. Notice what it says. It says, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Notice, unless the Lord had been my Hell. So he's talking about the presence of God there. And he says, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. Notice verse 19. In the multitude of my, what's that next word? Thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. I've got to tell you, there are many Thoughts that come into my mind that comfort my soul, but no greater thought comes into my mind than the thought that God is with me. Amen. The greatest thought you will ever put in your mind and focus and seek to keep in your mind the fact that God is with me, and that is a truth that we need to be. But to have the awareness of God, we've got to start our day and throughout our day continually be thinking throughout the day, you know what, the Lord is with me. God's here. God's presence is here. Oh, what a wonderful thing. It's like David wrote in Psalms 23. We talked about it last week. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, he said. Why? For thou art with me. David said, I have nothing to fear. God, you are with me. Hey, take a mama with a newborn baby. And she has to lay that baby down in the room. And hopefully that baby will sleep for a hour or two at least and uh, but don't you know and i don't know because i've never been a mother praise the lord because guys can't be mothers <laughs> somebody say amen uh but a mother she is constantly aware of that baby's presence I don't know how any other way to explain that. She doesn't force that. She doesn't make herself to do that because she is a mother, and that is her baby. She could be in the kitchen, and she could be washing dishes, and she may be washing a dish, and all of a sudden she thinks she hears something, and she shuts the faucet off and listens. See if maybe that's the baby. She could be vacuuming the, uh, the room and, and, and all of a sudden she gets this sense and she shuts the vacuum off and she listens for the baby. Why? Because even though she's working, she's cleaning, she's doing things, there is an awareness in her mind that, that whatever she's doing, she recognizes, she's aware of that baby subconsciously in her life and that baby is in her thoughts. And I, I submit to you this morning that we should be seeking to have that same kind of consciousness of God in our life all the time. Yes. 
And that is the key, I think. One of the ways that we develop a presence of God is that we are just, we, we cause ourselves to think about that and focus on that. And, and by the way, we do have a helper inside of us, amen? I remind you that when you got saved, the Spirit of God came in you, and one of the things that the Spirit of God does for you is constantly make you aware that God's presence is in your life, that you are a child of God. Look over, please, quickly. Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. I mean, I could quote it, but I really like it when you read the Scriptures. I believe it helps you more if you see it. But look at Galatians chapter 4 and verse number 6 and what it says here about the Holy Spirit of God who's in our life and it comes in our life when we get saved. Notice it says, and because ye are sons, or in other words, you are saved... God has sent forth the capital S Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit of His capital S Son, Jesus Christ, into your what? Hearts. He's in your heart. He's in your life. Notice, what is He doing? Crying. He is crying. Abba, Father, which we all know in the Greek, it simply means Daddy. Daddy. And so the Holy Spirit's inside of you. He is wanting to help you constantly to be aware that God is in your life, that God is with you. And not only is he, he's not just God, he's your father, he's your daddy. And so you have the Holy Spirit of God. Might I suggest this morning that as you start each day and you have that time of prayer and fellowship of God, why not ask the Holy Spirit, hey, Holy Spirit, make your presence known to me throughout the day. Help, help me to constantly be aware that you're with me, especially when I really need that awareness, Lord. May I suggest you do that every single morning and ask God to help you with that very presence in your life. I read about a man who so wanted to have the presence of God and practice that presence, the awareness of God. So he had, as many of us probably have, is he had a watch that had an alarm on it. So what he did was he set the alarm on his watch to go off every single single hour. And so at, when that alarm wa went off in that hour, it was a reminder to him that, that God was with him. And he would stop and he would just say, Lord, thank you for being with me. And God is with me. And then, but he, he felt like he still didn't have the peace that he needed to have. And he didn't really have the awareness as much as he had. So then he did it 30 minutes. And he put it every 30 minutes. And the alarm would go off every 30 minutes. And he'd remind himself that God is with me right now. He's right here in this situation in my life and then he put it on 15 minutes see the point is we could do that and the truth is we need to do whatever it takes to have the presence of God in our life and to be aware of whatever it takes it, it, it may be for you may, maybe Maybe it's putting a sign up on your, on your uh, uh, mirror in the bathroom. Ladies, you spend a lot of time there. Did I say a bad thing right there? But you do. You know, guys, comb your hair, you're done. Amen? But, you know, ladies, you gotta do, you got to do other things. Amen? And you say, well, i got to paint my face. You know what somebody said? If the barn needs painting, paint it. Is that bad? Boy, oh boy. Who, who protect me after the service this morning? I better, I'm in trouble. Especially Miss Polly just said, I'm in trouble. Um, boy, I'm done with that one, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, but I mean that. Maybe that's what you need to do. Maybe, I don't know. You know, remember, remember anybody remember the Lucky Rabbit's Foots? And you buy it and you keep it in your pocket and you kind of remember, you know, uh, for luck, you know, for good luck. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, carry something in your pocket that every time you fudge with it or every time you take it out, and you say, oh, God's with me. Yeah. How, maybe. May, there's bracelets you can buy. Yeah, yeah. yeah bracelets you can buy that, you, that you, you look at it and it reminds you that God is with you. Put it on, maybe you need to put it on your dash in your car. I remember when we were, I was in Bible college years and years ago, 1981, and, and, the, and the pastor of the college 
uh, we, that, the theme that year was the power of God. And he, focused, he said, now, pray for power. That was the idea, pray for power. And he said, put, pray for power here and put pray for power here. And, and boy, I had a briefcase, opened up my briefcase, had a big sign, pray for power. I had a Bible, and I put, I wrote on the, on the what's that part of it, what's that called? The binding part of it, I wrote on the binding there, pray for power. I put in my car, pray for power. I put in the bathroom, pray for power. Why? Because I wanted to be reminded, I need the power of God in my life. But really, more importantly, I need the presence of God to know that he's with me. I'm just saying, whatever you need to do, you need to find a way to help you to keep your mind and to know that God's presence is in your life. I believe Mary did that. Mary was a thinker. She pondered things. She looked at things. She kept them in her heart. And one of the things you need to keep in your heart is that God is with you. Oh, it'll help you so much. Now, number two, the second thing is we should constantly be seeking God's guidance. Okay, we need to constantly be seeking God's guidance. Turn over to Psalm 48, verse 14, please. Psalm 48, verse number 14. Seeking constantly God's guidance in your life. One of my favorite verses and comforting, encouraging verses for my life is this. Proverbs, Psalm 48, verse 14. For this God is our God forever. Amen. And ever, and notice, he will be our guide even unto death. Now, notice, it says he will be our guide. Doesn't mean he is your guide, but he will be your guide. And for you to have the guidance of God, you have to be aware of his presence. You've got to know that he's with you. And if I or you are aware of the presence of God, I'm going to continually be seeking his guidance. And by the way, on the flip side of that, if you are continually seeking his guidance, then guess what? You are going to be aware of God. So it goes both ways. So if you're aware of God and something comes up, you can say, now, Lord, I need help here. Or, Lord, guide me here. Or what should I do here? And I mean that. I, you ought to get up in the morning, have your time of prayer. Boy, you need that. You need to start the day with God in your life. But if you start the day with God, you can have him all day long. And you will be more prone to have him, the awareness of his presence, if you get up in the morning and you pray and you seek him and then throughout the day you say, Lord, help me to seek you, help me to get your guidance and direction, Holy Spirit, make me aware of God, remind me throughout the day of that awareness in my life. And the truth is, how many decisions do we make every day? Think about this. I do this more often than I should. And we make decisions oblivious to God's presence in our life. And we don't seek his guidance. And we don't seek his wisdom. We don't seek his grace. We get worried about something. Oh, boy, I don't know if I can do that. Well, hey, God's with you. Why don't you pray for grace? Lord, give me grace to do what I need to do here. Oh, my. Oh, we need to be aware of that. You, you need to develop that in your life. So start asking God for help to do the right thing. Ask for wisdom. Ask for understanding. Ask for direction. Ask to help other people. You know, really, brother, listen, you've, you've taught this many times, but pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Now, really, what does that mean? That means if you're praying without ceasing, that you are aware of the presence of God in your life. So you're always praying. You're always praying. Robert E. Lee uh, read his biography for years ago, and he said, he said, I never, he said, I don't even take a drink of water without thanking God for that water that he just gave me. You know what that was? That's practicing the presence of God. That's an awareness. And honestly, I find the older I get, the more that I am aware of God in my life. When I was younger, I wasn't. When you're young, and especially in the ministry, you, you know, your focus is getting things done. But now that I'm older, I'm not old, I'm older, <laughs> I, I, I find myself constantly aware of God and aware of what God is doing and aware of what God has given me. There isn't a day 
that I drive home and come down that hill to my house on the left-hand side and don't say, thank you, God, so much for this place. It's every time. And every morning I get up, I go out my side door and go over to where the car is and, and all those, those uh, fields and the cows and oftentimes the deer right over there and, and I want to shoot them every time I go out there. And, but, but I do, I, I, I walk out and, and almost every morning, especially if it's a sunny morning and, and the sun's not out, but I mean it's a clear sky and the sun's just starting to come out and where I get my car, my garage is right here and then it's kind of open here and then the fields with the cows and everything out there and I see the sun's just starting to creep up sometime and I, I just kind of stop and, and, and I'm almost in awe. And, and I think, God, that is beautiful. Thank you so much for giving me that. See, that, that's being aware of God and what God is going to do and what God has done. And we need to do that. We need that. And, and I, may I add this? The more aware of God that you are, the more you are not going to sin. You're, you're, you're going to think twice about sinning if God, if you believe God is right there with you. My sin is ever before me. And my friend, when your sin is ever before you, it's probably because you know the presence of God in your life. It's very convicting to have God's presence and to recognize that presence in your life. So practice that. He is your constant companion. He's with you all the time. I love the story of a man who's driving a Ford and he broke down. And boy, he spent two hours trying to fix that thing. And, uh, and so finally he kind of gave up and he sat down in the driver's seat and just kind of, well, what am I going to do? All of a sudden another car drives up and the car stops right next to him and the door opens up and he's kind of excited about it at first, but then as the door opens up, it's this old man kind of creeps out of there. And, and so he's thinking, well, well, whatever. And so he goes out and the hood's up and he's looking at it and the guy says, well, he said, I think if you, you do this and you do that, I think, I think you'll, you'll get it to run. And the guy's first thinking, man, who is this guy? But, you know, I'm desperate. I'll do what he says. And sure enough, he did exactly what that old man said to do. And, he, and, he, and the guy said, now go in there and, and start that engine up. See if it starts. And he went in there. And sure enough, that thing started up. And he was like, man, he came out, man, how did you, how did you know what to do there? He said, my name is Henry Ford. <laughs> and I'm the man that invented that. And I know everything about it. And can I tell you, friend, God has created all things. And by him, book of Colossians, chapter 1, by him all things consist. Everything keeps going because of God. God knows everything. And my friend, God knows everything going on in your life. God knows how to fix it. God knows how to help you. God knows what you can take and what you cannot take. And my friend, you've got God with you. Ask for his help. Amen. Let him be your guide. Let him be your strength. Let him be your help. Oh, Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. So you got to develop this thing. Got to, got to help. What's going to help you to have that awareness of God? Well, you got to seek to have Him in your thoughts. Number two, you got to make sure that you are constantly seeking God's guidance. Just keep talking to Him. When you're driving down the road, instead of listening to the radio, maybe, maybe just talk to God. But what's been bothering you? You feel some fear in your heart. Shut it off. Shut the music off. And just think about God. He's right here. He's with me right now. And just start talking to him like he is. Because he is. He is. Last one. We should daily spend time in God's word. That seems so basic. But it is so important. Turn over to Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. We, I use this verse. I don't like the way to use it. But I, I focus on this verse when encouraging you to read your Bible through each year. And it's because of one of the verses is this verse right here. Uh, but he answered, Matthew 4, 4, 
But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now, uh, I know there are some people just read New Testament. I've met some people just read Old Testament. I know some people just read Proverbs and Psalms and the Gospels. And by the way, you do what you want to do. But I do believe God wants us to live by every word that he has given us. And that's why I encourage you to read your Bible through in a year. But the word of God is vital. Why? Because it is the word of God that will help you to become more aware of God each day as you get up in the morning and you read it. And certainly, as you read the Word of God, it ignites you to think about Him. Um, don't answer this, but if you did read your Bible this morning and you, and you were reading it, by any chance did you happen to think of God at least one time? Huh? Uh, you probably did the whole time. And so if you want to develop this awareness of God in your life, then my friend, and by the way, if you are not reading the word of God, I, want to, I, I promise you what's happening to you, you are losing your awareness of God in your life. Well, you, you've got to feast on that, that thing. You've got to let the word of God dwell in you richly, richly. You want yourself to be filled with the Word of God and certainly reading it every day because the awareness of God's presence through His Word will give you peace, it will give you courage, it will give you confidence and strength to help through whatever it is that you are facing that day. And it's so funny how God many times will give you a verse for that day. <laughs> give you a verse for that day. You know, my daughter Valerie has been sick. And th th there's things that have happened the last couple of years, and, and I admire very, very much. One of the things that she did to help herself was she got three-by-five cards, and she put Bible verses, and she had those Bible verses all over the house. She put them in the bathroom. She put them in the kitchen. She had them all over the place, verses that reminded her of God's care, God's love, uh, God's presence in her life and it helped her so much to have those scriptures there. Why? Because when you have God and you know God is with you, it does give you confidence. It does give you courage. Be strong and have a good courage. God said to Joshua, be not afraid. He said, boy, I'm with you. You don't have to be worried. Just as I was with Moses, Joshua, I am going to be with you. And then Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, Brother Tudor, he talks about the Word of God. Amen. Talks about the Word of God. Talks about good success through the Word of God. But the presence, I'm done with uh, this illustration. Uh, I've, I think I've told this before. It's been a while, I'm sure. I was maybe 11, 12 years old. It was Halloween. And I took my sister, Robin, who's just a couple years younger than me, and then I took my brother, Nikki, who was just a couple years younger than Robin. And we would always have pillowcases. We, my mom would give us pillowcases. And we lived on uh, West Mountain Street, 216 West Mountain Street. And we were going to houses there. And, um, and so as we were walking past a certain person's house, there's a, there was a dirt road that went up into the hill. It was called Blueberry Hill. And we'd go up, up there in the field and the woods and everything up there. It was Blueberry Hill. And, some, and as we were walking past that road just a tad, two guys came down and they came over to us. And, and I knew them, but they were, they were, they were bullies. They were bullies. And, um, and so as they came, they started giving us a hard time. And I, I will confess, you know, my brother Nicky was scared. Uh, my sister Robin was scared, and I, I confess, I was scared. I'd tangled with these guys before, and they beat me up. Amen? So they came over, and they said, what do you got in there? And they opened up the pillowcase, and then they reached into their pocket right here, and they took two eggs and threw two eggs in each one of the, um, the pillowcases. Two eggs of mine, two eggs of Robin's, two eggs of Nikki's. Well, you know, and then they laughed. They thought it was big and funny and everything. And so, you know, they, Robin and Nikki started crying. Of course, I didn't cry. 
but not much. Yeah, really. So I, I got him home, and my dad is uh, Italian and uh, has a tendency maybe to get a little feisty and yeah. furious. And, and, and I said, yeah, and it came in, and they were crying. My dad said, What's, what happened? What happened out there? He, I said, Dad, so-and-so came, and they put the uh, uh, eggs in, in there, and he said, all right. He said, Joe, come on, let's go. Let's get in the car. And, boy, we got in the car. And my dad started driving down the West Mountain Street and lights on, high beams on, looking for those guys. And so finally we see him right that road just where they got before. We saw him, and my dad pulled in after him. They saw us, and they started running for the hills. Amen? But they made a mistake. They ran behind Rick Stoltz's house. And what they did not know is Rick Stoltz's house has a wall all the way around it. They were cornered. So you say, well, your dad parked in the driveway and went there. Oh, no. Oh, no. He drove in the backyard. <laughs> he drove in. The, and he knew Mr. Stoltz. They were good friends of ours. He drove in the backyard. He pulled up in there. And it's kind of like, you know, the, you know, the guys are in trouble and the spotlight's on them in the wall. That's exactly the way it was. Exactly the way it was. And so they're in the wall and they're scared to death. They know my dad. And they, but now they weren't scared of me, of course. And I was scared of them. A little while ago. But. So. They're there. Shaking in their boots. You know what I did? I opened up the door. (laughs) Slammed the door like that. My dad's on the other side. I said. You guys think you're tough. You're going to get it now. You guys are nothing. You are dead. Did you hear me? Dead. I had, I mean, I walked almost right. I walked up to them. I said, you're going to get it. (laughs) My dad said, Joe, calm down. (laughs) And my dad, now he didn't hurt him, though I'm sure he wanted to. But he put the fear of God in their heart. Amen. But you know what? Before, when I didn't have my dad's presence, I was scared to death. But when I had my dad with me, I was not afraid in the least of those guys. Because I knew if they even lifted a finger against me, my dad would have picked them up by the neck. How do you know that? None of your business. But he he picked them up by their neck and put them up against the wall (laughs) and gave them what for, amen? (laughs) The presence of my dad gave me courage and took away my fear and gave me strength. The presence of God, if you would just have that awareness, I beg you to get that awareness, you have nothing to fear. Nothing this year. So develop the awareness of God. And I promise you, 2024 will not be a year of fear for the people of Faith Baptist Church. It'll be a year of courage and strength and confidence in a great and mighty God. Amen? Amen. Because he is great and mighty. And we have no reason to fear anything. Let's bow our heads, please. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed this morning. I, 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 I say to you this morning, uh, I wonder if you're here and you're saying, Pastor, I, I, I need to develop awareness of God. I need to do that. You've given me three wonderful things. They have been helpful and practical. And, Pastor, I, I need to do that. I wonder how many would say, if it's just one praise the Lord, if it's two greater praise and more even greater praise. But I wonder if you'd say this morning, Pastor, I need to develop better and more a, a, an awareness of God's presence. Would you lift your hand up high in the air? Praise the Lord. By the way, my hand's up because I don't have it as much as I should sometimes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lower your hand. Now, I wonder, you're here. I said God's got to be with you before you can understand the presence of God in your life. I wonder if you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I don't even have God in me. 
I'm not even saved. I know I'm not saved. I know that I've never accepted Jesus Christ into my heart and in my life by faith as my Savior. Pastor, would you please pray for me that I would do that? that I would get saved. Pray for me. I want to know him. I want to know he's in my life. And I want to know that when I die, whenever that may be, that I'm going to go to heaven. Is there anybody like that this morning? Would you lift your hand up good and high? Nobody's looking other than me. But would you allow me to pray for you? Is there anybody like that? Amen. Amen. One raise hand. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody? All I'm asking you to do is just let me pray for you. That's all I'm asking. That's all I want to do. Anybody else? Anybody else? And, and I remind you, once you get God in your life, it'll be the greatest thing that ever happened to you. I promise you. I promise you. It will be. Anybody else? All right. Father, thank you, Lord, for those that raise their hand about wanting to develop the presence of God in their life and awareness of it, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what I prayed for this week and this morning, Lord. And I pray you'll help them. Lord, to come to the altar and dedicate themselves and commit themselves to this thing. And then, Lord, for that one that raised uh, the hand for salvation, Lord, help, help that person to come. Help them to come. And Brother Listen's here. Lord, help them to make that decision and step out by faith, Lord, so that he can put his trust in you and so you can put his presence in him. In Jesus' name.